night, Teddy's turn. so many uh, amazing uh, reunions and, and that's one of the sort of the, the glimmers of hope uh, that we've seen in these last couple of days and, and, and at times it's hard to hold on to hope around here. Uh, there is so much uh, still uh, yet to be discovered uh, underneath that wreckage and, and again it, it wasn't just the earthquake. In fact most of the, the, the deaths that we're seeing uh, have come from, from the, the tsunami, from the waves uh, that, that struck afterward and these new pictures that we've been getting uh, up from when the tsunami struck, and we've been getting more just today, uh, have been truly extraordinary. You really get a sense of seeing it up close, just ripping through streets, uh, people trying to run for their lives. Uh, it's, it's just been extraordinary. And again, these videos, which are going to be showing you throughout the, this hour and a half, um, it's, it's just hard to comprehend. You kind of just keep looking at them, and, and you can't believe that it's real. And yet, of course, it is all too real. Uh, I want to go to uh, Kim La, who's uh, in Sendai, Japan, as she's been uh, for quite some time now. Ride uh, was the first reporter, I think, from CNN to, to get into Sendai. Uh, a, a lot of lines you're seeing of, of people looking for food right now, Kim La. Anderson, this is what people here in this line are saying is the potential second crisis. We've been showing you all this video of people getting rescued out of those tsunami zones. Well, what awaits them on dry land is this. This is a store, a grocery store. It's not even open. They're opening the doors trying to just sell 10 items each to all of these people. This is a line that wraps around the block. It is hours long. And th let's go ahead and just show you. That's not even the end of the line. Let's show you all of what they have to go through. So these people then have to wait in this line, and what they're aiming for is right over there. The grocery store is closed. There's no power. Each of them are going to get the chance to buy 10 items, most of them opting for food and cup of noodle. What they're all telling us is that they need items. Um, after they've been evacuated, they, they don't have power. They don't have rations. And on this, this corner, that's this store, there's a store over here. The line has gone down significantly in the last few minutes or so, um, but there's another store over there, a third store. So three stores just in this one corner of Sendai. Um, if you drive through the city, this is a scene that's repeated over and over again. So um, this second crisis that the people here in this town are talking about is one of needing food and water, vital supplies, Anderson, that they say if they don't get they're worried about what's going to happen, if there's going to be a panic among the people who do end up getting rescued and then end up on dry land. Anderson? Kim La, uh, Sendai has about, a, I'm told, about a million people in it. Any sense of, of what percentage of the city was actually, you know, directly impacted by, by the tsunami, by the earthquake? If you think about the actual tsunami and the earthquake in zones, it, that's the best way to think about it. Um, closer to the shoreline, um, and this varies depending on how we look at a shoreline, because remember, it's very jagged. Some parts are limited to about two miles in. Other parts of Sendai, six miles in. Uh, right now, it's very, very difficult to tell the exact impact zone of the direct tsunami. And as far as victims and numbers, many of those people are still buried under the water, still buried under the rubble. The rescuers who I've spoken to say they've got to wait until that water recedes so they get an accurate picture of how many people are being impacted. Then you look at the earthquake zone. There's no power here. Uh, there are many buildings that are destroyed or shut down. We're in the center of the city. So the, if, as we ring out to different zones and where the earthquake that impacted, that's really where we're starting to see a bigger picture. It's very difficult to tell how many directly are impacted. As I said, it's early days in this thing, even though I know for a lot of people back in the States or wherever you're watching this around the world, you might feel like, well, look, this thing was three days ago. Um, yeah, and this is, we're learning new information uh, every hour, frankly, here on the ground, and it, it seems very slow, uh, certainly to the people in the affected area, but uh, there's a lot of folks rushing to this area, trying to do the best they can. We're seeing a lot more Chinook helicopters, large-scale big helicopters uh, in the sky, carrying supplies and obviously uh, bringing in troops and, and the like to help in the rescue efforts. We'll have more from Kim. Uh, uh, later on, let's go to Solon that O'Brien, who, as I said, is about an hour north uh, of Sendai right now. So that. 
Yeah, we're exactly uh, about an hour north of where she is, and it's been really interesting to see. I want to show you some of the, the remarkable things. If you head over to this gentleman's house, he's been clearing some of the stuff, whatever he can grab out of his house while he's been sort of car uh, parked out in front here. Look at the construction. I mean, this is so close to the center of the earthquake and also has been hit by a tsunami, and yet it's largely intact. I want to bring Anna Karin in. She's been here uh, since yesterday, really digging through with some of the folks who are looking for bodies. Um, it always surprises me when you see how high that water line is. Maybe you can get a shot of that, uh, Mark, uh, uh, to see really the, uh, how intact the house is and how much damage there is to other houses. It is amazing. Uh, we were with a military team yesterday, and they were basically going from house to house uh, trying to find any survivors. I mean, that was, that was the hope here. Um, it quickly became apparent that this was not a search and rescue operation. They were here to recover bodies, and that's what they were doing. They were pulling people out of these houses like, like this one. And, uh, you know, a lot of these people are elderly. I mean, for the people that we've spoken to who managed to get out in time, you know, they say that uh, they had half an hour between the time that the earthquake hit to when that wall of water just roared straight through here. So, you know, for the elderly who were on ground level, you know, standing where we're standing, they would have just thought, you know, swept up, carried away. It's about a kilometre, I believe, to where the sea actually begins. And so it rolled all the way in and then even further in. That's How right. many bodies were they able to recover roughly, do you know, yesterday? Yesterday, uh, a couple of dozen here. Uh, yeah, but it, it, it's just one of those things. It just, it just is going to continue as they are able to access these, these small towns, you know, smack bang on the village. The you know, death toll is definitely going to rise. Does it feel like it has... Um, there's a plan. I mean, as we've been watching some of the people come through, it, it doesn't seem like they're systematically going house to house, block to block. It's sort of a grid system. Sometimes you see the, um, the self-defense forces sort of start here and then kind of move mm. over there. Have you noticed any kind of a, a plan? Have they told you about that? No, no, they haven't told us about a plan. I mean, yesterday they, they came in here and they, they were literally going from, from street to street. So, uh, you know, I, I think they're, they're trying to get through every single house that they possibly can. We, we spoke to one man, actually, who was like that gentleman we just saw, he was going back to his house and he said that he clung on to the roof. That was the only way that he was able to survive the, the tsunami. It just it rolled straight through and he was just clinging on for dear life, uh, praying that, you know, he would survive. And he just said he was, he was one of the lucky ones. Whereas we spoke to another man who, who said, you know, his, his neighbours are gone. He can't find them. You said this is an elderly neighbourhood. Have they talked at all about what will happen next? I mean, I, I talked to a man who was in his mid-60s who was sort of trying to figure out, you know, do you bother to rebuild at that age? He lives with his mother, who's 87. Yeah, I, I, it, it, I know you look at this and you, you wonder how it is possible for these people to uh, rebuild. But, you know, a gentleman that we spoke to, he, he spent his life here. You know, he's 65 years old and, and, you know, he said, this is my home, I have to rebuild. So, you know, you look at this and, and the building is standing, but there is just debris absolutely everywhere. And, and as you go further towards the coast, I mean, it is just an absolute mess. Right yeah, totally. All right, Anna Karen, thank you for the update. Appreciate yeah. that. So, Anderson, you see a couple of people coming through on bicycles and cars as they try to pick up, you know, blankets, mostly pillows I've seen. There's not a lot to save inside these homes. You've seen very similar things in the wake of a, a hurricane or other tsunamis that you've covered. Not a lot to grab, but people coming in getting what they can before they head back to their evacuation site. They're really now um, hunkering down and spending the night. Anderson? Yeah. Uh, Soledad will check back with you uh, shortly. Uh, Soledad was talking about the search and rescue teams. We're seeing uh, numbers of, of search and rescue teams from all around the world coming in. When I flew in uh, yesterday uh, into Tokyo, there was a team from Taiwan that had just flown in. A team from the United States flew into north, uh, northern Japan uh, early, I believe, from Fairfax County, uh, Virginia, well-known search and rescue team. Uh, and as we saw in Haiti, what they like to do is uh, basically make grids of every neighborhood uh, and assign one team to a particular grid, and that team is responsible for searching every street and every structure in that area. But that takes time, and it takes organization. It may not be the point to Soledad's question. It may not be the point where they're organized enough to really kind of section off uh, each team, because they're getting more and more searchers, they're getting more and more military personnel, uh, Japanese Defense Force personnel on the ground here uh, every day and, frankly, every couple of hours. So a, a lot still uh, left to be searched. A lot of these villages uh, still left to be searched. Uh, we'll get to the one thing that's coming up shortly, Gary Tuckman, right after the break, uh, where they believe that as many as 9,000 people may be missing. We'll have Gary's report in a moment.
outside or on events like that, you, you wonder, you know, how, how do people even begin to, to clean up? How do, how do you begin to, to rebuild your life after something like this? And as we've seen time and time again, it's, it's people just taking a broom and taking a shovel and just starting. And starting somewhere and, and uh, just trying to do the best they can and helping one another. And that's what we're starting to see already. Uh, but there is still so much need here. If you're interested in helping, uh, see, you go to cnn.com slash impact for, for a list of organizations that are working on the ground here in Japan uh, that could uh, certainly use your help uh, if you're so inclined. I want to go back to Soledad, uh, who's uh, with Gary Tuckman, who was in a town uh, where they believe as many as 9,000 people, I think, may, may be missing. Soledad? Yeah, it's a terrible uh, statistic. And Kyung-Yong will tell you just a moment ago about all these coastal villages that we're not only hit by the earthquake, but... Words are flowing out like endless rain into a paper cup They slither while they pass, they slip away across the universe Pools of sorrow, waves of joy are drifting through my open mind Possessing and caressing me 